Hello, I'm Kyle Adams, and in this episode, I'll be talking to you about custom guides and why those are so important for creating quality icons. You may have heard of using a grid before. In fact, you might be using one right now for certain things you're doing, but they're extremely important for icons they simply allow you to create a compositionally sound icon where all the curves are the same, all of the angles are the same, and yes, you can bend the rules a little bit in certain aspects, but overall it gives you a really good idea of what you're doing and why you're doing it. In this episode, I want to talk to you about creating custom guides in Illustrator, how you can essentially create custom lines that will allow you to align your icons to each other and create a cohesive icon that's compositionally sound. Now, this does translate into starting to create cohesive icon sets, but in this episode, I won't go as much into using this for individual icons. I touch on that at the end. So if you'd like to know a little bit about using custom grids to make really cohesive icon sets, there's a little bit about that in the end. But most of this episode just talks about how you can begin creating compositionally sound icons that will shine when they're presented. So let's get started and dive into how you can do this in Illustrator and really make it easy to use. So let's first look at how Illustrator handles guides. Guides are essentially the lines within a grid system. So the first thing we have to do is turn on rulers. And to do that, you'll go to View, Rulers, and Show Rulers. As you can see, you can also do the keyboard shortcut Command-R or Control-R if you're on Windows. Bringing up the rulers will show these black rulers on the top and the sides, and those rulers allow you to create guides. Simply move your mouse over the top of one of these rulers, click and drag. Now you'll see this dotted line and that represents where the guide will be once we let go. I'll put it up against the circle, let it go, and if I unhide the guides, you can see where the guide is at. You can also do the same from the top and create guides this way. Now this is fairly efficient if you're creating guides for a specific object. Maybe you're doing a, a layout and you need everything to be on the same guidelines or you don't need complex grid systems that have curved edges or anything like that. But for the purposes of icon design, this can get fairly confusing, especially if you're working with multiple icons because these guides will always stay the same width as your view. So if I zoom out, you can see that they are always expanding across the entire canvas. Let's take a look at the custom grid system I've made for this icon. Now you'll notice over here I have four layers. And those layers consist of the target, a bow and arrow icon that I will show you later in this video, and two layers that have guides on them. Now, you won't always have to do this, but for the purposes of this video, I decided to hide the bow, and so I need to also hide the bow's guides. The guides you create with the ruler aren't subject to any layer, so they don't exist on a layer, they exist as their own thing, and when you show and hide them, they just exist, they're not part of a layer. But when we start creating our own custom guides, they will be part of a layer. And so my recommendation is to create your own guides layer, not necessarily for each icon, depending on your purposes, but at least a topmost layer that you can show and hide, that way you're not accidentally moving guides or removing guides or just lots of confusion can happen. So I try to keep guides on their own layer when I'm working with a project. 
So let me bring up the guides for this target. And you'll see that, that it's fairly complex. I'll hide the target real fast so you can see the grid itself. I've created a bunch of circular lines that represent each section of the target and also some angled lines to show you how I angled the arrow, for example. All of this is not completely necessary, but I've created this to show you how complex you could get with these custom guides. Let me go into some details about how you create these custom guides. We'll start by creating one. So if I grab the rectangle tool from the tools panel, I can create a box. Now I'm not too concerned with making this pixel precise. Normally I would be, but for the purposes of this video, that's not my main concern. My main concern is simply showing you how to create the guides. So we have this box and you'll notice that it's a normal shape layer box. There's nothing really special about it yet. I'll also go to the tools panel and select an ellipse. And we'll create an ellipse inside of this so that we can just give you a little more complexity. So essentially you're laying out your grid using lines or shapes. So now we have somewhat of a grid. And if you select all of these objects and use the keyboard shortcut Command-5 or Control-5, if you're on Windows, it will create guides. And these guides can be used just like regular guides can. Uh, we can show and hide them without turning on and off a layer. So for example, if I bring the target back, you'll notice that when I show and hide guides by using Command semicolon, the target stays in place and also the layer does not hide. If you want all of those to move together by just selecting a piece of it, you can select all and choose object group. That will group all of these together. And when you select one single area, it will allow you to select the entire grid system. One more example I want to show you is what this looks like in a practical use for creating another icon that is cohesive. And what do I mean by that? What does a grid actually do for you? So I'll remove this grid that we made. We don't need that one anymore. And I'll bring up the new bow guides. Now this is the same guide system as we have for the target. You can see here, they are the exact same. And I'll bring the bow up to show you what's going on here. So we've got the bow and you'll notice that certain points intersect each other. So for example, here, the edge of this bow hits the intersection here between the horizontal line and this second inner circle. Also, the bow string goes across this intersection. So there's a few areas that it touches on. Also, it's the same width, so it hits the same points on the ends, etc., etc. The benefit of this is that you're creating something that's cohesive and has similar properties. So when you put them next to each other, they seem as though they belong together. I hope that was a helpful overview of guides. There's a lot to go into and I've only touched on the surface of this. So in future episodes, we might go over a few more things about guides and how to use them. But hopefully for now, this gives you a really good overview of why you should use guides, how you can use them, and what they'll do to improve the quality of your icons. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. This channel is just getting started and I'm already excited about the tremendous support I've seen. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. And so on top of being pixel precise in a width and height form, you also need it to land on a pixel grid 
added even 